Who were the people of the Kingdom of Strathclyde and the Hen or Glaive? And what is their connection to Wales? Today I've come to Dumbarton Castle, which sits on the volcanic plug known as Dumbarton Rock. Dumbarton, meaning Fortress of the Britons, was the scene of countless epics down through history, including a Viking raid that I will explore in more detail later. Dumbarton Castle was the capital of the Kingdom of Strathclyde, also known as the Old Clue, meaning Rock of the Clyde. An early Brythonic kingdom that existed from around the 5th century to the 11th century. The people of the Kingdom of Strathclyde spoke Cumbric, a variety of the common Celtic Brythonic language. Cumbric was very closely related to Old Welsh, and there are many more references to Wales in this story. This is because the Kingdom of Strathclyde was part of what is called the Hen or Glaive in Welsh, or the Old North in English. It refers to a historical region in parts of southern Scotland and northern England that was inhabited by Brythonic people who spoke Cumbric. Interestingly, the Welsh word for themselves is Cymru, meaning fellow countrymen. Strathclyde was just one of many kingdoms and peoples in the Hen or Glaive. They included the Godovan, who inhabited the region of modern southeast Scotland and northeast England, and who were descendants of the Votadini. Another kingdom was the Kingdom of Elmet, who inhabited a region around West Yorkshire. And finally, the Cregent, who inhabited the region around Galloway and modern Scotland and Cumbria. There was, and still is, a strong affinity between the people of Wales and the Hen or Glaive. But why is this the case? Perhaps part of the reason for this affinity is that some traditions state that an important Welsh leader called Caneda, who lived from 386 to 460 AD, came from the kingdom of Godovan in the Hen or Glaive. Caneda is said to have come from Mane Godovan, the modern Clark Manishire region of Scotland, and settled in North Wales. He would go on to become the king of Gwyneth in ancient Wales and found the royal dynasty of the Gwyneth. The men of the north are constantly featured in Welsh literature, and many heroes are from the Hen or Glaive. Cole Hen is one legendary figure, for instance, a leader of the Brythonic peoples in the late Roman period, and the progenitor of several kingly lines of the Hen or Glaive. Later legends spoke of him being the grandfather of the Roman Emperor Constantine the Great. If we turn our attention back to the Kingdom of Strathclyde, Dumbarton was an important defensive stronghold of the Old Clue, given that it allowed them to control the shipping routes along the River Clyde. Long considered a prized fort, Dumbarton Rock was attacked several times during the Old Clue period, including by a coordinated attack by the Picts and the Angles, as well as the Vikings. The Viking siege took place in around 870 AD by Ivor the Boneless and the Viking ruler of Dublin, Olaf the White. It's important to note that there is some debate about who exactly these Viking leaders were. With this being said, Ivor marched his army north from York, whilst Olaf sailed across from Ireland. Hebridean Vikings were also likely to have fought alongside Ivor and Olaf. The ensuing siege lasted for four months and eventually resulted in the Britons of Dumbarton having to surrender due to starvation. Norse sagas claim that the only Old Clue water well eventually dried up, leaving them no choice but to surrender. The Vikings then stormed and plundered the fort, taking whatever valuable treasure they could get their hands on. This treasure was then put on a fleet of over 200 ships that set sail for Ireland, along with any captured slaves. The king of the Old Clue, Artgal Mac Domagall, was taken prisoner and potentially killed in Dublin in 872 AD as a favour to the Picts, who looked to exert their influence over the Kingdom of Strathclyde. The Old Clue did survive, however, with Govan going on to become an important centre of the Kingdom for a century or so, until the Kingdom of Strathclyde was absorbed into the Gaelic-speaking Kingdom of Alapa in the 11th century AD. From the Vikings to the Welsh, Dumbarton Rock is at the heart of so much history. Thanks for watching. If you would like to support this work through Patreon, 
buymeacoffee.com or make a donation through PayPal. Please do so via the links in the description below. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell and I'll speak to you soon.